And now, from Grid Square Echo Mike 48, this is 100 Watts and a Wire. Oh, <laughs> Lordy, 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 make it stop, make it stop. Jesus Christ. It's true, it's true. Oh, Ooh, Lord, I thought I was on a roller coaster I didn't want to get on. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome to 100 Watts and Wires. Christian, my call signs, Kilo Zero. Jesus Christ. Zia. <laughs> That was uh, a little traumatizing. I'm sorry, buddy. Sorry about that. K0STH and Steve W7UDI. Boys are back together. And um, if you notice... Boys are uh, back in town. Boys are back in town. Uh, we have to mention, Scotty's out there making that money. And we, uh, we always uh, want you to go out there and make that money. No doubt about it. What's he doing? He's mixing music for a, a, a cover band. A Jimmy Buffett... Something almost a cheeseburger Jimmy in Buffett paradise. Cover band, or yeah. I don't know. I I don't know, but we want him to stay paid. That's the big uh, the big deal. And uh, it is really good to be back. Thank you guys for the kind messages and the chat. We do this every Sunday. We haven't done it in a while. We realized that, and we can talk about that in a second. But um, you know, it's now seven o'clock Eastern time. As I've moved to Sarasota, Florida, and really, I I sent some text. I'm going to do a thing on the. Uh, show here and it's just going to be like portions excerpts what, what do they call it redacted it'll be redacted excerpts of steve and myself texting each other because some of it i can't share with you and apologies yeah. to uh <laughs> it's not family <laughs> friendly point zero zero one percent but we don't want to lose her but actually it's all in good fun but we you know we share these conversations and i think well that's kind of fun you can see exactly what questions I've asked Steve here, and we could do this probably over the last decade, and it would be, be a pretty fun new show. Anywho, um, yeah, so Scotty's doing his thing tonight. He's doing a mix in, I guess, Ellicott City for a Jimmy Buffett cover band, and uh, so Steve and I are going to run with it like the olden times. If you have a question, put a cue in front of it. We'll try to keep up with that um, as we go. It's just the two of us, and Scotty, one of main uh, his main gigs here when we're all together on the live stream is keep an eye on your questions but we do have some that came in and uh we can we can get to those a little bit later in the night so how is everybody doing it's uh there's so much to talk about and to unpack i've been doing a little bit of that i've been doing these dailies steve at just a 20 minute clip them mm-hmm. off you know because i'm here i'm not working per se for the man the man, the man. i'm not working for the man <laughs> So, you know, I'm here with my little one, and we'll be around this week, and we'll be figuring out things and exploring Sarasota and the differences. It's so different. Um, And I know you just went to Kansas, and Mm -hmm. it's probably a similar uh, change in geography where you're so used to something in a certain way. How was your trip out there, by the way? Oh, it was great. It uh, It was good to be with family. I got out before the fireworks, and uh, for you folks in Kansas, you take your fireworks serious. It's a freaking, it's a war zone, <laughs> and yeah. uh, it, it's just unbelievable. Uh, but no, it was a great time. It was good to be with family, and uh, uh, the oldest daughter has a pool, so I spent uh, quite a bit of time around the pool, and uh, it was hot as AF. It was unbelievable. And, Hot uh, AF is a new meteorology <laughs> term uh, there. It's a new rating, actually. What were you dealing with? It was triple digits, right? You told me I checked uh, Close to you. it, yeah. I think there was 102 one day or something like that. And then with the humidity, I mean, here in the Northwest, here in central Washington, we don't have humidity. I mean, uh, I'm used to humidity this time of year down into the... Uh, double digits, uh, low do- double digits, like 20% down to 15%, 10%. And uh, so it's a pretty dry environment here. And I go into the Midwest and it's like, oh, this, it's, a, it's a culture shock uh, for the body. Yeah. Here we've, um, we're settling and we've been here about two weeks now. We came two weeks on a Sunday, two weeks ago, just moving in. And it's not culture shock but it still feels like we're on vacation. And, you know, I kid every night, it, you know, you know, I'm, I'm it's, it's this thing, you know, I, I always think that like, even with great artists, you've had like 
pick one, Aretha Franklin or Neil Young or whatever, they have these tremendous highs and they also have these lows that, that kind of mm-hmm. balance everything out. And so we've got these tremendous highs, like there's some really good things going on. And then you've got me uh, losing a gig, <laughs> looking for work and trying to figure it out, piece things together in a new place, right? So everything is kind of balancing out. But one of the perks of living here is that we would take a walk and I walk a lot at the, you know, in the evening time, probably after the show, we'll, we'll go and do a, a quick little walk around the neighborhood. But you're just, you're so cl- close to the beach. And there's a couple of points here that's maybe, I don't know, you know, a mile away tops, right? There's just different points along the key where you can go and we're trying to find these little things and where locals might hang out, where they don't deal with all the congestion and stuff. And here we are, we find these little gleams of like paradise. I sent you a picture last night. There's another oh. one I could share. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, that was I awesome. That I was can't so believe cool. we're here. You know, it's just like, we can't <laughs> believe we're catching a sunset in this beautiful place. So you've got this balance of, you know, isn't this nutty? Because people, the thing about Sarasota and Florida, I think in general, is it's it's a destination in summertime, like right now. And then the people who live here leave. They leave in the summertime and go to wherever, whether it's Michigan or someplace cooler or wherever, Washington State, wherever it may be. And then in January, when it gets cold where they are, they come back. So they're here like January to m- May. And then they snowbirds, roll Snowbirds, yeah. Yeah, the snowbirds. Yep. It's a real freaking thing. It, it's it's so uh, interesting. But uh, anyway, all of that to say is we're, we're settling in. Uh, I, I cannot tell you, Steve, and you know this because you've been doing it for over 40 years, the kindness of the community of amateur radio operators. It's not expected at all. You know, I don't think like that. I don't think that people would call and say, are you okay? Or drop me an email or whatever. But I started doing the podcast last week and talking about my situation. I talked about the membership and what I was doing. I had structures before, you know, it was kind of like, you can come in this level. And we we talked about this endlessly among the the team, you know, what's a benefit and what's all that. And, And then I was like, you know, this week, why don't we just make it one freaking thing? It'll just be one thing. It's one level of membership. If you want to come in, great. Here are the benefits. And, you know, the benefits are, as we're talking about that, you know, we're going to do this cohort. Steve and I have been talking about this kind of cohort. It's all the people who become members. And they will be invited to these things, whether they're monthly or bi-monthly. We'll figure this out. This is our first chance to get back together in in a while. I want to share our stories and our projects and ask questions among the cohort of members, right? So that's a perk. It wouldn't be uh, streamed out. It would just be us. It could be five people. It could be everybody would be invited who was, you know, a member. Membership level is the same for everybody. Um, Bringing back the company discount participating companies and we've got a few now and i'm excited about that because sometimes you can just send an email people are like yep because it doesn't cost them anything it's kind of a win-win-win situation for that um ni4 l antennas eminent radio waves was like yo why didn't you tell me you were moved i would have come and like helped and i was like is that a compliment like what do you help me or was like get the hell out of here let me help you load those boxes it could be either one but uh, we opened up a conversation because he didn't know. And, you know, I didn't really announce it too much. But Radio Waves, first in, first in to give a discount to our members. If you're interested, uh, interesting antenna he's working on. We can talk about that as well. MFJ, right behind him. MFJ is now, uh, and again, a participating member of this benefit. It's almost like a coupon book, Steve. If I could build it up and get all all the companies together it'd be almost like a coupon book if you're old enough to remember that if you're old enough to remember that do you uh give us a thumbs up um so you got ni4l mfj radio waves and bio no power kevin at bio no power is just like yeah maybe try this and then, like and then the community our community is so like just on it you know, they know that balance mm-hmm. I'm dealing with in my life right now. And they're just like, 
memberships and their memberships and they're helping and Big Ben, you know him from the calendar with the dogs taking shits and they're like all over the place. <laughs> like 12 months of that. Like, oh, we got a poodle next month. I don't want to look ahead. Eh, let me look ahead. Oh, the German Shepherds. You know, what are they feeding that guy? But Big Ben Yeah, speaking me. about that, every time hey, I take my dogs out to <laughs> do their thing, I'm like, <laughs> I think of the calendar. <laughs> it's like, well, I got three American <laughs> Shepherds here. They're all just doing their thing and... <laughs> We can add pictures. <laughs> and, and somebody's making money. I think it's a benefit, but he uh -huh. sends them out to the team. He's like, you got to have this. I'm like, yes, I guess I do. Thank you so much, you know. But um, he knew I needed a window pastor when somebody asked about mm -hmm. the antenna, and we'll talk about that. You know, he he just packaged up the window pass-through that he had and that he made and sent it. It's, it's here. You know, and, nice. and people are buying, you know, it's just the generosity, I think, you know, of the people in the community. It's felt, and I appreciate that. And so, anyway, I figure I share that um, with all of you guys. But that's kind of the members uh, thing, that cohort, when we're going to get together and talk about projects and ask questions and share information, uh, the discount. And, and in videos like Steve's, Steve did a tremendous video I love this video and I used it and I reference it anytime I'm making a double bazooka. 3,000 people, I think, have uh, watched it and used it and made these antennas. That's a, that's a kick-ass video. Well, it goes first to members. Um, uh, so that's what we'll do. And those will be the perks. And it's simple. Everybody's the same. I felt like, you know, we got these different levels. And then I got, I got one and Scotty's over there giving the tuggy. He's like, hey, what... What kind of benefit <laughs> perk is this, man? You sold it, so I'm now doing this. I'm doing two hands now. You know, I'm thinking, yeah, that's not cool. Like, everybody the same. And uh, so that's it. Um, so our membership is back together, and it's easy uh, to get involved. If you're watching, it's on your screen. If you're listening, it's buymeacoffee.com backslash 100 watts. But you can get to it from the website, 100wattsandwire.com. Simple, easy, pay all at once if you want, or pay monthly. No big whoop. Any thoughts about any of those points there, Steve? Oh, I think it's great. I, I, I like the single level. It's just, let's make it simple. Do the KISS method and just go from there. And uh, that's awesome. That is, that's great. Thank you everyone for, you know, for, you know, helping out. And uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a whirlwind for the last month or so. It's mm. been pretty, pretty nutty, but uh, it's, it's good. Yeah, um, I like the one level. I mean, if you think about it, even if I got into this thing where I did dailies, shorts, like, you know, there's so much going on and I'm, I'm moving to a new area presents all these new challenges. I, I was spoiled a little bit. I, I guess I would say I was blessed with land and space. I had eight antennas up. They were going every which way I wanted to. And if I didn't, if something was in my way, I cleared it out. You know, that's how I was going in Missouri. Mm -hmm. And I was not complacent i guess i wasn't spoiled it was just but i was like yeah man i turned my and hey k0 sth boom picked right up because you know i had it like that and coming down here is a whole new thing man and i'm starting to kind of unveil that with friends in our community of what what that means and i know i'm getting questions about the uh, the antennas and what i'm doing and what i'm thinking about so uh, we will talk about all of that. There was a point in that, but um, anyway, thank you for your support and caring and waiting because I know we haven't done this in probably five weeks. And I got to thank Steve yeah. because Steve's always sort of like the voice of reason. I don't know if he just doesn't give an F. He's just like, <laughs> take off. He's like, hey, uh, how about this? Take a break. Take a break. <laughs> just like, take a break. Yeah, actually, that's I mean, it's a the, really the, good idea. The stress man. of moving is, and then try to do a show, a weekly show. It's like, no, let, let's just stop that, get remove that that stressor, and concentrate on everything else because there your plate is full. You don't need to add any more, any more to it, and uh, we'll be fine. We'll you know, we'll be back, and here we are. We sure enough did. We sure enough got back. 
And uh, speaking of the thank yous for some of the folks that came through, it was a pretty quick week and I banged out a few shows in a row doing these dailies and even uh, Farmer Farmer Rex like posts in the Discord. He's like, hey, I caught up on the dailies and that, this guy's riding in one of those, what are they called, combines and he's corn and soy and he's in there with the big old tractors. You know, and he's kind of like implies, hey, how about mixing in a guest? You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'll get you, I'll get you, Rex. <laughs> Man, too far, I'll get you back. But, you know, he's right. Maybe we'll start to bring on some more people and, and talk about that. But I want to thank a couple people by name because they were, uh, this week they, they jumped in uh, on the memberships or buying coffees or just donating and whatever. Uh, Michael N I, uh, I'm sorry, N one X R R, Tom Kilo Seven Foxtrot, <clears throat> Zulu Oscar, uh, Don, who you know, he's here, he's here. It's uh, Mitz is his nickname. Kilo Charlie Zero Delta Whiskey Zulu, Paul N two Hotel Yankee Golf, Kyle Michael K one Five U T S. He may be here as well. I think I saw him. Thank you, Greg, and uh, Don. Don Gover. Different, different Don. I think he's California Don. We'll call him. Thank you, guys. Uh, and that's just the first batch through. And if they're ready to make a purchase with any of the participating companies, we'll, we'll hook that up for sure. All right. There's a couple of questions that have come in that are quick that are kind of for me. Um, let's see. Do the cohorts get to vacation at Christians, that's the, uh, <laughs> I don't, I am living in paradise, but there isn't a lot of space in the house, but maybe a tent in the yard. I think I got a little more space. <laughs> There's a hotel the down the road. <laughs> uh, Ken asked, uh, he's been absent for a while. He wanted to know when I moved. I moved about two weeks ago, uh, this Sunday. So today, two weeks back was our first, uh, day here. And then there was also a question, uh, let's see, uh, Ricardo, yes, I've always said Ricardo lives in paradise, and now I've joined the party. He has a little bit of a deeper party, because he's up near Orlando, he works at the airport, he fixes them, he's got the screws and the uh, wrenches, uh, he fixes the planes when they come in, but he's around all that fantasy, so he's like in paradise, but he's around. He's on Fantasy he's, Island. He's on Fantasy <laughs> Island. I'll never be like you, sir. I'll never <laughs> be that cool. Um, let's see. And lots of folks are here. That's great. Uh, appreciate that. There was a question about uh, from James. What antenna have you decided on, Christian? And this is one of the conversations that Steve and I have had ongoing because mm -hmm. he said, you know, and it, it, it's it, it's really interesting as as the text would roll out it should become a part of the thing when i was packing up i was struggling with what to take mm -hmm. and because i didn't have to move everything this is a family in missouri it's a family sort of homestead and i didn't have to move everything i wish i would have brought a dresser because my clothes are piled right over there high and deep <laughs> and it makes me nuts if I have to go anywhere for a job interview, I, I hope I have an iron somewhere around because it's just over there. Um, but in terms of the ham radio stuff, man, you know, we we compile thousands of dollars worth of stuff. And I was having a hard time deciding what to bring. You know, I'm like, Steve, Steve, um, sorry. I have another question. <laughs> Send. Ding. Send. I'll, bre I'll break it up so it doesn't look as much. And I'm like, okay, you just spent 30 in a row. You just sent him a six-page novel. But I was I was really struggling with it, man. I mean, I had Oh, yeah. A it was it was a struggle, too. I mean, I, I was putting myself in your shoes and, like, going, well, what what do I take from right. here? It's like, right. is, um, um, let's see. Uh, is this a long-term gig or is it just right. a temporary gig? And all this uh, so it was it was a struggle coming up with uh okay this that or this this it was it was nuts it got to like okay i it was like solar and keep in mind guys i'm down here and ricardo of course he's down here he's a fantasy he's literally ricardo montabon was modeled after our ricardo 
of Fantasy Island. He is like the king over there in, in Orlando. I had to send him a letter, stamp certified, send the raven. It was <laughs> such a bizarre thing. But anyway, like, I remember him saying, you know, the lightning strikes during the day here. And, he, and it was like crazy amounts, like crazy amount of lightning strikes. He'll put you in there. He'll, t- he'll tell you because he would drop this information in how many lightning strikes were happening in his area. And it was like, what? And so, mm-hmm. and I'm in an, uh, you know, I'm in a hurricane zone, like for real, real. Now I'm in a place where my mind is switching to, all right, what do you have? What do you need? How does like being in Tornado Alley transfer over to hurricanes? Hurricane Alley. <laughs> Hurricane Alley. And I remember typing to Steve, texting, how much solar should I bring? Like, should I bring my 260 watt foldables? Should I bring the 120 and like my briefcase? Like I've got a little bit of solar and I've accumulated it over the years. And it's like, you know, I've kind of put you in a weird spot. I'm like, what the hell do I do now? Like, and I've got like an amplifier. I'm like, this thing costs me like thousands of dollars. Am I going to let it sit here? You know, do I need it? Am I going to, so there was a balance I was looking for between how long is the gig? Will my wife enjoy what she's doing? Will we be here a year, two years, five years? Is it forever, ever? And I think we kept coming back to the point where like, you will go back and visit the family. You can pick up what you need. Let's see what you have when you get there and how much space you're going to have and, and uh, go from there. You know, because Steve's like, eh, stop effing texting me, huh? <laughs> no, he wasn't like that. But we were really putting kind of pencil to paper to think about. Well, the other thing is you had a trailer, you had a pickup, and it's like, okay, how much stuff do you got to put in there? Are you going to fill it up with all your ham stuff and not the family stuff? And it, it, it was there's that balance. And then the nice thing in your case is that you have the family homestead. And uh, so you can always come back and get something if need be. It might not be tomorrow next week or next year but it'll be at some point you'll be back and if the s hits the f down here we can go back there you know Mm -hmm. that's the kind of that's the kind of thing because it's a family unit again but there's still some things back there did i bring more than i needed maybe maybe but i got to talking to steve about my amplifier which you can see maybe back there yeah it's just it's not turned on because I don't have the, uh, what is it, 220, I'm going to, is it 240? I'm going to turn it over, I'm going to switch the plug back to 120, Steve's going to help me, I'll get to the hardware store and pick up that part, and then maybe I'll have four or 500 watts out here. Mm -hmm. Which is perfect. Which will be fine, I think it's fine. Okay, so, you asked about the antenna, somebody did, and thank you for that. Um, So... I got here, and uh, two weeks ago, I looked in the yard. I've got a big, beautiful banyan tree. I'm basically giving specs to Steve. When I say Steve is my mentor and has been my mentor slash Elmer slash whatever you call this thing for the last decade, it's true. He's everybody's Elmer, but he's my going to do Elmer first. <laughs> 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 uh, just kidding. But I, uh, th- there are a lot of conversations going on about like, mm-hmm. okay, what is it? What what kind of trees, what overhang? And it's a thick canopy here. There's a beautiful banyan tree that kind of fans out over my yard. It's in a neighbor's yard. And then there's all these other different trees. There's a couple palm trees, which I've come to find, like, they're a little spiky. Before they kind of get round and beautiful, they kind of get spiky and sh- kind of, like, useless You know, trying to tie off to them and things get complicated. But I gave all these kind of specs over to Steve and I was like basically thinking, you know, let's go back to basics. And I would like 20. I would like 40. If I had to pick a favorite band that I would do only maybe might be 40 meters because it's here day and night. But but that's another point here in in Florida I got to talk to you about over time. So I thought a 40 and a 20, that's what I use when I'm portable. I've got a 4 to 1 Balan. And I've got a 20 and a 40 made up already for about 25 feet in the air. 
I've got a limb at 30. I'm giving all these details to Steve. So I put this up and I've got neighbors around me and I'm like, okay, it's doing okay. It's not great, you know, because you're doing with two, two bands and you're, you know, mm -hmm. off center fed and it's uh, not a perfect antenna. It's not a mono band, which I prefer. I haven't done an off center fed since the early days. And as soon as I could get off of an off center fed, no disrespect to off center feds, I went mono band as soon as I could. So I hadn't dealt with an off-center fed unless I was portable, you know, so I, I didn't, didn't look down about it, but I was just using mono bands. There you go. Um, and I got enough space for a 40 and a 20. We're talking about 68 feet, 30 feet in the air. Steve's doing calculations. I'm doing calculations. I'm out there with a freaking compass. I'm like, here's what I can do, man. What do you think? You know, should I go? Yeah. It's a whole different deal. We could talk about this too. Let you talk for a second here, because I'm I'm going on and on and ranting about this. But <laughs> no, that's fine. I've leaned I've leaned on you so heavy in the in the times, and I always had my antenna ends pointed north to south because I was in the middle of the country, and my broadside was east to west. And then when it got to the point where, well, can you put another one up? And you point the opposite way, and then you've got two antennas. You switch back, you got full things or whatever. You know, here I was like, okay, I got this, and it's off center fed. And uh, we're going to just kind of go with that. And so we started looking at it. I put this off-center fed up with red wire. Granger had a sale, guys, years ago. And I was like, I'm going to get 500 feet of red insulated wire. Who cares? I live in the woods. Nobody cares. I come down here and I'm pulling up this thing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm up there 30 feet. This is going to be good. I think I can make it. Red as like, you know, like, oh, no. Like, everybody in the whole land is going to see this. And it just didn't. I was like, I'm going to get popped here. No HOA, but, you know, neighbors. And I'm in a lady's tree. I'm tying off to a fence that might be hers. I don't know. Like, I'm like, this red isn't good, man. This red. Isn't good. The alligators were in the, in the, the, you know, the clear water over here. Like, it's not good, man. You don't do that. This is Florida. Don't do it. Pulled it down. I had a, a, a Steve special double bazooka 40 meter. I put it up there. Told Steve it fits. I'll run with that for a little bit. Because it was black. Everything black. And it fit in better. Um, I had a $20 bill in my pocket. Right? I'm not touching any money because of my situation. I had a $20 bill from the move. I got 75 feet of wire. And I thought, maybe I'll make an off-center fed. I, it was a smart choice. I didn't throw it in the family kettle. I took the 20 for myself. <laughs> I, need some, I need 75 feet of wire, man. I need 75. Just give me 75 feet of wire. That's all I need. Um, and I think it was just buried in my wallet. And I made up, I whooped up an off-center fed, put it up with black wire, and that's what I'm using for 40 and for 20. I don't know if it plays well on 10. It might. Might even do six because I cut it for 66 feet, but I haven't checked. But to answer your question in a very long fashion, that's what I'm doing. And then Steve's making one. Steve's making one this weekend. Talk about that antenna a little bit. Uh, that you were well, with. It, oh, it, oh, dear. Uh, boom, happened? boom. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're right. shrunk down. <laughs> uh, what, who turned on the cold water? Oh, shrinkage. Yeah. Well, I... um. I had an off-center fed that I built so oh, a year or two ago with a with an MFJ 300 watt uh, uh, ballon, and so I stuck it up. I pulled down the fan double bazooka. So if you've kind of watched on uh, on the Discord group, I threw together a a, a dual band a double bazooka. It's been one of those things I've been kind of thinking in my head is like. How well will it will it work? And so I whipped one out and stuck it up in the air. And pictures are on the Discord group. And uh, it, uh, it plays. It's I'm not real thrilled with it, but it. So, but I I had it up in the air. It was getting beat up by the wind and baking in the sun, and it, it's been holding up pretty good. So uh, it uh, I brought it down, threw up the double bazooka. I mean the off center fed. And, uh, 
started, you know, messing with it a little bit. And I was like, well, I need to change the ballon because it's a low power ballon to uh, for a high power ballon um, to anticipating Christian going, you know, running about 500 watts or so. So this little MFJ thing would just smoke, get smoked. Mm -hmm. So um, then the, the I put it up, changed the ballon out. Man, 40 was great. 20 went to heck in a handbasket. So then it was, we went back and forth, talked about different offset combinations, went with the uh, the 66, 33% offset. So like, well, that's, that's a starting point. And then I started playing up and down. That, that antenna came up and down to the point to where I crushed my... <laughs> Archie8x because the ballon is about yay big and it's pretty heavy and when I I mean I just dropped it <laughs> I just it went zoom, and then it it hit and uh, I pulled it back up after making an adjustment and the the uh, sweep just went off the <laughs> off the rails and I was like uh oh <laughs> so fix that and uh, and now I got it down to where it was and uh, sorry Don. Yes, I could probably do better. I could probably move that dip around a little bit, but you know what? Overall, it was a balance. It uh, I, and I've always said, and uh, the the off center fed dipole is kind of a compromise antenna, but uh, for both uh, bands, I pretty much got it uh, down to it's one point one. It's one point five to one across all of twenty meters, nice. and it starts a little high on the bottom end of 40 which christian you're not a cw operator and right. most of us are not but it got much better towards the upper end of the band so i was like hey this is a win what the measurements are i have no idea i have to pull the antenna back down and lay it out out on the uh, out on the drive and uh and put the tape measure to it and uh, see what uh how it came out yeah, overall length and then the uh and then the opposite. So that's been kind of a fun little project. It was hot yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was in the 90s. And then after a while, I was like, okay, I have enough being baked out here. And uh, that's when I just left it as it was. It was like, this is good enough. <laughs> so it, it's been kind of a fun thing trying to figure out. All right. And what I have found is if you make an, an off-center fed, a 40-meter off-center fed, it only it's a basically a two-bander antenna. I did sweep it on 10 meters. It is a bit high on the VSWR, but if if you're using a tuner in your radio, perfect. It'll take care of that. It uh, I always shoot for when I'm building antennas so that you don't have to use a tuner. Just tunerless, uh, you know, resonant or get the best resonance uh, on the band. So that's was my goal and uh, and we kind of made it. 10 meters, eh, it, you can use it for 10 meters, but to me, I think the uh, off-center fed, um, a 40-meter off-center fed dipole is just basically a two-band antenna, 40 meters and uh, and 20 meters. So uh, we got there. It, uh, it was an interesting, it was fun. It was uh, a fun time to, uh, you know, play with antennas and stuff. Uh, a little disappointed in the fan dipole. That, that's the one I wanted to get down to Florida was this fan double bazooka. And it was like, um, I was like, oh, <laughs> it didn't play as well as I, I thought it was going to play. Your numbers but, weren't I mean, so it's usable. bad, though. What, what was no, wrong? It, it's, um, the 20 meters was great. The, the VSWR on 20 meters was awesome. It, uh, the 40 meter, I, I could get it. The 2.2 to 1 was the best. I could get on that. It was uh, it was disappointing. It uh, it's usable. It's doable. Um, it, like I said, if you have a tuner, it's perfect. But twenty meters, it was like one and Same. a half, one point five. It was nice. And so, uh, mm. info's on the you know the build and the pictures and stuff like that's on the Discord group, uh, just under Antenna Talk. So you can go look at that. If you're not a member of the Discord group, consider joining and. Uh, and then you'll get to see some of the the antics that we get to do. All the links for that stuff is uh, down below in the description, whether you're on YouTube or whether you're listening uh, to the podcast. 
you know, I this was a I talk about things being a little different, and and I wonder. I get. Let me go back to your uh, double bazooka make. So you were using like a one to one, and then you had two. You had the forty on top, and I guess the twenty came out. Were you, were they flat top, or did you kind of bow tie them out? Uh, like the a flat, flat top. top on top, and mm-hmm. then a bow tie and an inverted V. It basically. So if you've seen the video, the same build as I did and I just added a, a 20 meter wa- uh, coax and then they all just tied together and then uh, then the, so you have the 40 meter on the top and then the 20 kind of came down on an angle and then about a foot away from the center section there was a, a spreader that uh, and then the then the 20 meters was uh, uh, parallel about a foot down from 11 to 12 inches down from the uh, 40 meter so I don't know if may, uh, next is to try uh, a bigger spread and maybe that might counteract the interaction between the 20 and the 40. I had an NI4L, uh, NI4L uh, like a bow tie, like the one you made, and I, I flat topped the first, the top band, which I think was 40, and then I brought down the 20 in an inverted V, and mm-hmm. I had it up in a decent spot in an oak tree back in Missouri, but I had it too close. The feed line was too close to the trunk of the tree. And I mangled that poor antenna up, man. I was so mad. This was at the time where like you're crushed when you do something and something breaks because you don't know enough to get yourself fixed back up. And, uh, but that's how I remember trying to do it. The top, doing a straight across and then the uh, an inverted on the bottom looked like a bow tie and it looked like it was going to do it and i got it caught up in the, the tree and it's a mess so you can hear the family here ringing through the little dog now this country little dog now barks at anything that moves we don't have deer but we have weird strange different birds and the birds let's talk about the peacocks for a second you guys know about peacocks <laughs> They make two different kind of distinct noises. The first one is, Mm -hmm. help. Now, I thought an old lady across the street was in trouble one morning. I was out. I walked out on the lanai that somebody mentioned, which is a screened-in porch. I I love it. I wish we had some rain. I'd sit out there and uh, ohm or whatever. Don't worry. You will get your rain. We're going to get It's rainy season now. It's been just really dry. It rained yesterday for a little bit. I go out. Five in the morning, I'm on the lanai. I'm looking to walk around. There's no bugs. I'm giving bugs the finger. I'm in a screen porch. I'm like, eh, take this. And I'm hearing, help. And I was like, what the hell? Help. I was like, that, somebody, <laughs> somebody's, I'm a city kid from Baltimore. Somebody's getting, something's wrong. Go out the front side, and I'm, it's like up in the tree. I'm like, lady. <laughs> <laughs> How you get up in a tree? It's five in the morning. Help! <laughs> Turns out it is a friggin' peacocks, right? I didn't even mm-hmm. know. And then they make another noise similar to a <laughs> goose. And it's like a honking, but it's not, um, you know, like a goose honk. Similar, but like, you know, I'm like, what in the hell? What bird has to? They're so beautiful, Steve. Let me tell you a little side story here before we get to your guy, your questions and stuff. I know I go off the track, but it's good to be with, with, the, with the crew. I'm walking with my wife, right? The kids are doing something else. They want to watch a show, you know. So we go for a walk through the neighborhood, and we've got like 17, reports are like 17 or 18 peacocks are living in the neighborhood because people are feeding them and they won't leave. And the lady across the street who I thought was stuck up in the tree needed help to get down, mystified by this whole thing. She doesn't seem to care for him too much, but I was like, okay. So um, we're walking, and this white, all white male, he's got his shiz all opened up. He's fanned open, like let me show you like this, like all open, like, and it, it, and it had to go like five feet out, like huge feather display. I'm like, wow. And he's got, like, his ass to us, right? And he's got, like, oh, he's holding it up. Like, oh, I'm holding it. He's, sque- <laughs> he's squeezing the glutes. He's holding up the, the, the feathers. And he's trying to attract the lady. 
<laughs> very similar to what Steve and I do. But anyway, <laughs> hold the glutes, hold the glutes, fold the thing, whatever it may be. And he's fanned out. And then uh, the ladies are kind of hanging around, you know, but they didn't seem too interested. And he's beautiful. I took pictures. I'll share it with you next time. And he makes this little noise. He's shaking like his core is shaking. And there's like a shh going on. And I'm like, I'm ready to F this bird. I'm like, this is something else. I'm like, this is great, man. Seeing this? Like, he's so sexy. But uh, anyway, that was my little side story. I didn't know the noises they made, and I didn't know they were so big when they fanned out mm-hmm. like that. And apparently, they get up on the houses. They're in the trees way up there. They're walking down the streets in this neighborhood. Peacocks. That's just one of them. And totally related to ham radio. You have any experience with peacocks, Steve? Believe it or not, yeah. <laughs> you do? I'm down the road. <laughs> yeah, so we have a... Uh, a, one of my neighbors, he uh, he's uh, one of what they call a holding fa- uh, holding facility for cattle, and so they're just constantly rotating through. But somehow, a cup he has some peacocks, and yeah, the first time I heard them, I hear, oh, what the <laughs> hell is? <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't seen any of them, you know, doing the you know, got their shiz going out and all yeah, this other stuff. Man, it's beautiful. I'm going to send you. I'll I've text almost, you that. I almost hit a couple of them uh, on a, you know, heading down to the station on a call. <laughs> and it's like, what the hell are you doing out here on the road? And, uh, but uh, yeah, ours are just black and blue. And, uh, but uh, yeah, they, they make all kinds of uh, crazy, crazy sounds. Uh, but, uh, have you hit, ran into the uh, cicadias? And, uh, no, not yet. I bet you that's oh, freaky because everything's sand. You know, it's sand if they're coming out of the oh, earth. My. That's such a freaky scene. Oh, they got them in Kansas, and man, they are noisy buggers. So, yeah, it could get uh, loud here. My recordings may you may just hear different things because it's a, it's a lot of different going on. And one of the things I'm enjoying almost daily, and I have the option to, is because there's an empty lot next door, and there's a mango tree. And the lady who I thought was stuck up in the tree calling for help. And I was like, how is this woman? She's like deeper in her 70s. How is she up in this freaking tree? And it turns out she wasn't. But she's got her own mango tree. And hers one, she gave me this story about her her mangoes. Like her, uh, <laughs> not her gordos, but her mangoes. <laughs> I'm like, well, you all see my gordos. <laughs> she's like my, uh, my twig and nut group you know whatever they she's part of some thing here it's a group a club and they talk about you know whatever and they have like a taste testing thing this is really getting getting dirty now but she takes her mangoes and she you know they put them in a little thing and they taste them and she wins because they taste so sweet insert your gordo joke (laughs) and (laughs) you know we are back we are back in full force Oh, just in time to see Pastor Joe walk in, of course. It had not been this dirty the whole time. Jesus Christ. Okay, you're right. You're right. It has been. Oh, my. Let me uh, get to our sponsor real quick. If you're looking for a power solution, check out BioNO Power, offering the best lithium phosphate batteries for your ham radios. Visit BioNOPower.com. That's B I O E N N O Power.com. If you find value in the content and the community here, you can go to 100 Watts and a Wire and be linked to all of our socials. Get yourself a 100 Watt ID. All of that is free. Uh, If you feel moved, you can become a member just one level. It's $5 a month. If you want to do it, you can pay by the month. Quit when you want to. You will uh, have access to our cohort group where we get together kind of like this, but everybody's in the room. We'll share our stories successes projects ask questions share information i think it's a good idea i'd love to do that with you guys get early content like steve's double bazooka video first before it hits the rest of the uh, world you can also go to buymeacoffee.com 100 watts and uh, participate it's just easier and cleaner one level bada bing Thank you for that. Again, if you're tuning in uh, late or in progress, 
uh, on the live stream, Scotty is mixing a band this evening and making that money. And we, uh, we are like, make that money first. We want to do that. Steve, you want to answer some questions here? We got some left over from yeah, before we even it. got in. And if you have a question while you're here, put a cue in front of it. I'm trying to keep one eye over here, and I got one at the grocery store and one bringing home the change, <laughs> and I'm looking all, of, all about. Um, so if you have a question, you can do that as well. Let's see what's left over from uh, five weeks or something like that. What configurations work well for NFED antennas? And we can open this one up to our chat as well, uh, Steve, because you and I, we have always wanted to play a little bit mm -hmm. with NFEDs, but... Now I look at it a little differently now because it could be a decent option for me in terms of stealthy, maybe. Any ideas of what you've read or heard about NFEDs that may I, work? I mean, there's people have done uh, so. I, so configurations. So, you know, the standard is just the, the flat top horizontal. There's been uh, another NFED is your inverted L is essentially kind of an NFED. Uh, you have a vertical portion of it, and then it uh, goes off horizontal. Uh, other people have gone uh, kind of the inverted V kind of the uh, angle. So um, pretty much any configuration that would fit the situation that you're in. So uh, the nice thing about long wire antennas is that it doesn't have to go straight. It doesn't have to be one straight line. You can't. You can put bends in it. Whether it's you can zigzag it around. It could go up a bit and then horizontal and down. It can go around corners and stuff like that. It's just whatever you can make it fit, and that's the uh, the nice thing about it. So, um, I, I mean, the sky's the limit, and uh, you can even go around the house. <laughs> with your NFED if uh, if that's what you got and uh, but uh, I you know the most common ones have been the you know just flat top and then the V is a common one is, is the mo is the two common ones that I've seen over the years so let's talk a little bit about that a little further now if you are bending like I've seen antennas go up over limbs and say you've got an inverted V and it's too long, and the ends just drop down. Mm -hmm. How does that affect the antenna? I guess you put it up there and it see, but it's not like folding it back at the end and wrapping it, right? You're not going to lose yeah. length by that? <clears throat> well, when you fold it back onto itself, then then it just basically is RF floats on the surface of the conductor that you're using. So it's just looking at the, the physical length. So, But if it bends down, does a 90 degrees, and then just goes down, the RF just is going to follow this the the wire and it's just gonna go oh there's the end and uh, we're happy um any so, advantages to that change of direction i mean is it i guess it just becomes the, the, kind of it, it fits into your your situation so in in your case uh having a uh uh you know the uh the intent the ends dropping down so when i build a when i built the 80 meter 160 of oh, the 80 meter off center fed dipole the two towers that i have here are 100 feet apart so i can't put a full size 80 meter antenna up or the one six or the you know off center fed or or even a, a full size uh, uh, uh double bazooka i have to go back about 20 feet or so off the ends of the wire put a pressic knot on it and then support it there and then just drop the ends to make it fit between the towers when I'm, you know, working on them to test them and uh, trim them up. So in that case, you can do the same thing in your lot there with that between your trees is like, oh, I only got 100 feet between these. Then you just kind of you I use pressic knots and just attach onto the uh, onto the wire and then just drop it down. So it uh, works out works out pretty good so i mean that's an option there you don't have to use a pressic knot you can uh put a uh, some people will use insulators and uh you'll come up with a a way of uh bending the wire and supporting it on the ends going over a um going over a piece of wood uh you know a limb or something like that the wire hitting or going over the wood instead of the rope going over the wood you got issues with that i mean if you're bending uh, things around you might go 
wrap a tree around a tree. And then, then you've got metal hook options too. I mean, if you could get up there and reach it, but what's, yeah. what does a limb do to your signal? Um, it will, it will have some effect to it. Uh, the biggest problem is going to be the abrasion of the, uh, um, of the wire, you know, if it's insulated, you eventually get a, you know, you'll wear off the insulation because of the movement of the tree branches. And, um, it will have a somewhat of effect on the, uh, on the VSW because a live tree is conductive. So it's going to end up, uh, having some kind of effect on your, uh, on your antenna. Todd asked a follow-up questions. A couple of this, this is uh, good. And, and some of the folks here have uh, some answers and some uh, questions as well. But yeah, Todd, inverted V in theory is omnidirectional. Although, you know, I've, I was in Missouri and I believe that is true. I did see different results from inverted Vs in different allocations. So if I had North serving broadside, North and South and East and West, I'd hear a difference. Although it was omnidirectional, I'd hear a difference. There is some directivity with an with a uh, with a inverted V, and it's uh, more off the ends of the wire, and uh, versus the broadside. So, but uh, it's kind of a th think of it as a you you got like your balloon, and then you just kind of grab it in the middle a little bit. But uh, it so it, it's not a full uh, omnidirectional. There's a little bit of a a null on the sides, but, uh, it's not much, but there's a little bit. So it's, uh, most people kind of consider it an omnidirectional antenna, but it, there is some directivity in, in them. Okay. Thank you for that question. Let's see what else we can do here. We're creeping up on, uh, just about an hour now. Time flies when you're with your buddies. That's for sure. Appreciate you guys. Another question. If you have any, you can send them to us through here, through the chat, through email. I'm easy to find. How does water affect antenna performance? It is the especially salt water. It is the best counterpoise, or um, hmm. it's your ground. I mean, it's the it's conductive. Uh, uh, you know, it's a conductive uh, material, and uh, it is great as far as you know as a counterpoise. It's like so. If you ever notice, if you ever see pictures of D expeditions, especially when they go into these various islands in the South Pacific or in the Atlantic or wherever, they like to set up next to the water because the water is a, and it's just a vertical. They just set up a vertical and uh, they throw a wire into the water and boom, now they have this great counterpoise that, uh, um, you know, helps their signal. And it's, uh, it is a huge, huge advantage. Um, fresh water, not as great as salt water, but there's still definitely a, uh, an advantage and, uh, being, being close to the salt water is a, is a big, big advantage. Well, that's something for me to think about. I always was mm -hmm. an, a bit nervous and it's naivete as uh, Steve says, uh, throw people seeing people throw their line in the water. I'm like, Ooh, I don't know about that. What's going to happen yeah, there? It's just your counterpoise. You just throw a, throw a line out in the water. Just one, one line. And that's all you need. You sacrifice that uh, copper and Hey, you're good to go. We have a uh, time for one more question and then we'll uh, let you go. So the folks that are here with us live during this recording can go check into the net. I will listen. I didn't even get to my RF situation. I've got a crap RFI situation happening on my transmit only 40 meters on 40 meters yeah. when I'm running my audio out of my 7610 to my mixer. I've been coming out of the headphone jack into one of the channels of my mixer. It doesn't do anything when I'm not messing with the mixer. If I just pick up my, my mic key up and I'm plugging, not dealing with anything headphones directly to the radio. When I run it out of the 7610 to the mixer on 20 meters, no issue. Go to go to 40. I'm like, well, I scared myself. I'm like, what happened? I'm calling on 13 colonies. I'm like, oh no. Like, what did I do? And I went nuts. This is a conversation probably for next week, but I didn't fix it. I've decided that, you know, I'm gonna just I'll go directly from my radio. I haven't got my push to talk foot pedal microphone set up here yet i'm going handheld uh, 
I'm just not going to deal with it, Steve. There's too much going on. I'm just, I've got it mm-hmm. plugged in now. I can bring it up. We can hear something. But to transmit over it, boy, I don't know. It's, it was too much for me to take. I was like, I can't. I just can't do it now. I can't do it. I'll have to wait it out. But did you have thoughts? Uh, grounding <laughs> for one. Send, send me a tell, <laughs> send a text. Save me the text. So you think I should put a, a rod outside the, the window and ground my radio and ground? Is that what and, you're thinking? And, or ground, just... uh, well, it needs to go back to the service panel. But uh, we can talk about grounding later. Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's something. But I, I, luckily, I'm not getting it coming directly out of the radio. It's just when I'm adding this mixer, it's another mm-hmm. step. It's more. And I think there's something going on with the electricity in this house. May not be no. as clean. Mm-hmm. No? No, that's not it. No, that's no. not it? Damn it. No, I ran into it. it it's just uh, 40 seems to be the band that just likes to get into electronics that I have noticed. And uh, powered speakers is just... Hideous. So I think some, uh, obviously I wouldn't pick the audio off the, um, off the the headphone jack. I'd probably pick it off from the back if there's a low level, um, point where you got it before. And, uh, we just might have to put some, uh, ferrites, uh, just to kind of choke it out there. It's just RF being induced onto the, uh, onto the wiring and, uh, just kind of getting into it so in a nutshell but uh, yeah i didn't have this problem back in missouri and mm-hmm. i and i've been coming out of the headphone jack uh, for a while but there mm-hmm. is a monitor out or an external speaker is how it's labeled actually two and i think it's the eighth inch jack or the 3.5 or whatever the number is and i don't know if i've got anything long enough and i've got to cross it change it over to a quarter inch eh. so I'll work on that, but the good news is I can go ahead and transmit, get my 96 watts out or whatever I'm putting out of this radio now. Last question, it's timely, so we'll get it in here. How did you do in the 13 Colonies special event? Steve, did you get to play or were you too busy? I didn't play at all this year. uh, I've been, since I got back from Kansas, uh, it's just been been real busy here. Um, I get it. But uh, I got back on the 3rd, so it was right away uh out onto the with the uh, fireworks going on on the third and then the fourth uh was on duty and it was just uh it was pretty hectic and then uh, back to work again and uh so it's uh, mama's not home so i'm batching it so there's uh, a lot of stuff that uh, i have to pick yeah. up uh with mama not being here mama's with the grandkids I understand totally, one hundred percent. You make it sound like it's just, uh, it's just, just so, so much stuff I got to do, and then the uh, fist bump and high five and thrusting in the hips. I get it all. I see. I missed. Uh, let's see. I missed A, K, the uh, Great, uh, Great Britain, and the uh, the French station. But you know, I. I think I did more than I thought I was going to do. Mm-hmm. And, of course, again, my situation is I'm not able to j- dump 1,000, 1,200 watts on somebody. I'm 96. It's getting me back to, like, being efficient, waiting, listening more, the tail ending. Am I catching him as he's getting ready to go off? Did I catch him as he's coming on? But I wasn't breaking pileups, and your boy isn't breaking pileups, Um at all at this point so i'm i'm getting back to being um a smarter operator i guess and Mm -hmm. and just lucky in some regards where i'm catching them at the right time i last one i worked was massachusetts and that's a pretty good haul from uh this point in florida going straight up and uh, band um you know i think it was 20 i think it was 20 i'm not positive i want to check it though just because while we're here together i can check it easy enough give me a second to uh, have this open up and i'll check it um but yes the uh, net will be starting seven uh, eight, eight o'clock uh eastern time and it looks like uh don is set up on 72 12 let's see if i can uh, pull this up because you want to see where and we had allocated my antenna in the yard here to favor, I think you want it to favor a little bit more of the East Coast. 
Uh, we, we were kind of shooting for, and that was part of the, the, the mm -hmm. all the stuff all the going back and forth. It was like, okay, you got to put up one antenna. So you're down in Florida. Where do you try to put your main lobe, which you want to try to get the, do you want to go north, south, that uh, you just want to work the east coast and then, you know, give the bird to the, uh, the peacock bird to the mm -hmm. west coast? Or, uh, or do you want to kind of maybe situate it to where your, your main lobe is going to kind of go towards the Midwest and, uh, you know, give some love to the farmers in the Midwest and, uh, and then just kind of pick Whoa. up the, uh, <laughs> and pick up, uh, the East and West coast. And that's kind of what I was uh, favoring just to kind of, you know, for the most bang for the buck. Um, I know local, some of the local guys there were saying, no, 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 you gotta go North South. You gotta, Right. And because for there, north south, you're going to get to all the east coast, but also will give you Europe because right. Europe will be like at 20, 30 degrees or something. You'll have, you know, a dipole is a pretty broad, uh, the main lobe is pretty broad. So, you you know, you'll throw some love and into, into Europe and stuff like that. So I, I can see that, but it just, so that's the, you know, some of the, t we've been going yeah. back and forth on uh, trying to figure out where to position the antenna if possible because of the trees and the you know everything else going on there and then just trying to to benefit it um for for me and florida poof, pipeline no problem so um, i can't wait to try it i'm going to try it tonight i'm going to turn the net on when we're we're finished here and mm -hmm. if i'm if i'm giving you guys numbers i am um where am i at let's see because I think it's 240 and 60. That's kind of how my ends are pointing. So it's north, northwest, and south, south, east. Did I get it right? I've been messing it up on the uh, on the thing. Um, but that's where we are. That's where we're favoring. Steve thought that was a good idea, and I could fit it in there, mm -hmm. and that worked. The question, the Massachusetts, we went up on 40 meters. Um, that was a good, that was a good country haul for me and a, a good mix. A lot of 20 meter contacts looks like. So it's a good mix of 20 and 40. I didn't play any sort of digital stuff, not on any 15 or 17 meters, which I love a lot. 40 and 20 Massachusetts. We had to work for it though, Steve. I mean, it's like, it wasn't like, Hey man, how you doing? You sound great tonight. That's great. It's awesome. Would you say it was like, uh, I got the zero to zero again. You know, we were working it. We had to work through it, but we made it. I'm in a different mindset, and I think it's good, so I don't get complacent to kind of like ah, I got everything I want. And I got a new challenge now, and that's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, Steve, thank you so much for hanging out. It's always fun. I know you're going to head to 20 meters. Is that where you're headed tonight? Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll pop down into 20. Uh, get things going here and uh, get me a freshen up because um, I got up. I got a problem. There's a hole in this bottle. So. That's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> we appreciate all of you. Uh, let, let me know what you think about the dailies because I've been able to clip off a little bit of, uh, you know, 20 minutes, a little bit of conversation, send them out, share it with you. If you're into that sort of thing, let us know. I may do it as a live stream. We'll see how things pan out. We're, we're, uh, we're grinding here in Sarasota, Florida. Steve, thank you, my brother. I will listen for you here for the first time in Sarasota on 20 meters. Don yeah, will be working on 40. Take care, everybody. And uh, 73, Steve. 73, Christian. Take care of yourselves. Look after each other. And by all means, if you can, please try and stay above the noise. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, y'all. See you next time. To join the 100 Watts in a Wire community, visit 100wattsinawire.com.